So I want to explain to you the most important reason why our stock market has been performing badly because of this single person. His performance is lousy. I am putting it very mildly. Lousy is very mild. This is the first three prime ministers, Tunku Abdul Rahman, uh, Raza Tunusin On. He came in in 1982, right? Left in <laughs> too late. He left in 2003. And a lot of Malaysians, particularly our media, and a lot of naive Malaysians, focus on his economic performance in that short period of about seven, six, seven years, where Malaysia's GDP, yeah, did well, seven, eight percent, superficially did well. But you ignore the very serious economic crisis that we faced in 1985, the one in 1997. So under his 22-year rule, Malaysia suffered two economic crises. The Lucas policy failed. And what is more importantly, not just the failure, but the economic consequences, that economic and political consequences that the failure of Lucas policy has created. Malaysia before the fourth prime minister don't have money politics on no. Hussein On, Tunku Adraman, no, no such thing as money politics. No such thing as crony capitalism. It was copied by the fourth prime minister from Japan. The most important thing is that he has pygmified Malaysia's economy. You know what's pygmified? You know what's pygmy? Pygmy are people who are African people who are very small in size. They, no matter how old they are, they're still very small. So this fourth prime minister, whom you all respect him as Malaysia's father of industrialization, actually made Malaysian economy into a pygmy. The key thing that I want you to take away, I'm, maybe I said it in too humorous a way, that the absence of the influence of the fourth prime minister is a super bullish factor for Malaysia. I shouldn't say it in such a humorous way. I should have said it in more like a professor way. But that is the most bullish factor for Malaysia because he single-handedly has been the one that has destroyed the country. Whether in terms of prime minister, whether in terms of the economic policy. Now, for the first time in 40 years, we have, Malaysia has the chance of having sound, decent economic policies. And the country cannot develop unless you have good economic policy. And the stock market cannot do well over a sustainable basis unless you have good economic policy. The semicon industry, I'm talking about now, if we don't have the semicon industry in Malaysia now, Malaysia economy will be something like the Philippines. I'm not exaggerating. The semicon industry is so important for us for the present for the future, that without it, I think I'll probably have migrated. The summary is, the macro situation is a positive tailwind. We have got political stability, the US-China relations, the tension between those two giants is benefiting Malaysia, and this will be a positive factor for KLSE because the foreign funds will come in, and the stock prices will rise. Therefore, the NAV of ICAP will also rise. Investor sentiment generally will be better. If you look at other countries like Thailand, where they face political turmoil, that is bad for the stock market. So when we have political stability and so on, uh, the investor confidence will be a lot better. This is for ICAP, our declining cash holdings. And then this for ICAP, the strong performance, NAV and share price, and the dividend policy that is, that is the most innovative in the world.